From the Convergence Studio in the School of Communication, this is Loyola News Chicago. Hello, and welcome to Loyola News Chicago. I'm Jordan Gutterman. And I'm Amanda Crohan. Here's the news. Loyola plans to close Kenmore Avenue forever. The plans are to create a larger area of campus similar to the northern part. The school hopes to obtain the right to the property and tear up the road in order to create a more campus-like feel, with the additions of more green area, benches, and bike paths. Loyola's Capital Development Department is still working to get permission from Chicago to own the entire section of Kenmore between West Sheridan Road and West Rosemont mm -hmm. Avenue. Loyola students need to stay alert when commuting on the train. Loyola's campus safety recently sent emails about an incident near the Loyola Red Line. On February 13th, two female students were victims of battery. On the 16th, two Loyola students were also attacked at the Loyola Red Line. In both incidents, the offender was identified and arrested. Some safety tips from campus safety include not sleeping on the bus or train, sitting near the bus driver, and staying alert. All incidents should be reported to campus safety. A slice of rum is coming to Loyola. Felice's opens its doors to the public on Saturday after hosting a few sneak peek events this past week. The student run business serves pizza that is cut to order. Customers choose the size of their piece and, and prices are determined by weight. They also offer soups and salads. The restaurant is named after John Felice, the namesake of Loyola's Rome Center. Felice's is part of Loyola Limited, which gives students real-world experience operating businesses. Felice's president, Sean Connolly, says managing classmates has been very educational. It really teaches you how not to come in and just boss people around, because that doesn't get you anywhere. It teaches you how to actually build a serious team and work on a team with your peers and treat everybody with respect and actually work like a team. Felice's will host an official grand opening on March 23rd featuring Loyola President Father Michael Garanzini. Loyola is preparing to buy one of the most popular off-campus apartment buildings. The Phoenix reports that the Sovereign recently went on the market due to safety concerns. The building has 238 apartments, mainly studios. It is located on the corner of West Granville and North Kenmore Avenues. Loyola's assistant housing director says they are under uh, contract with the Sovereign to stabilize the campus neighborhood. The housing reapplication process continues and students are preparing to select their residence halls. As the 2012-2013 housing selection approaches, students continue to look at the housing options. Some students choose to live off campus, but others recently received their lottery numbers from the Department of Residence Life for on-campus selection. Students can choose between the Lakeshore Housing and Water Tower Baumhart Hall. The Department of Residence Life firmly believes there are many benefits to living on campus. I think people should live in residence halls because it's a good way to make sure you stay involved in school. Um, in residence halls you learn about what's going on within Loyola and what's going on within the community of Loyola. Students will receive a confirmation email for their completed selection by March 15th. It's career fair season at Loyola, and it's off to a good start. About 900 students attended Loyola's campus-wide career fair at the Gentile Center Tuesday. Students were able to research careers and network with a variety of employers. 99 organizations came to recruit for full-time employment, as well as summer and fall internships. That made this year's career fair the largest turnout in Loyola's history. Employee Relations Coordinator Marty, Marty Gaubauer told us this could translate into an increase in higher hiring rates in the years to come. Other more specialized career fairs are planned for the weeks ahead. The Lola Phoenix is an award winner. The newspaper won the title of Best College Non-Daily Newspaper in Illinois. That was one of the 11 honors the Phoenix received from the Illinois College Press Association. Editor-in-Chief Nathan Lurz is appreciative for the awards. The staff writers hold themselves to the standard as an award-winning newspaper and continues to keep competing for the awards. Some of the awards include Hannah Helbert's first place win for the news photography category and Tahara 
Rahman won second place in the news story category. Loyola's varsity debate team is racking up the wins. The team of Nick Locke and Elvis Vasey won first place in a tournament last weekend at Wheaton College. They won all eight of their preliminary debates and in the final round they defeated Cedarville University. Nick and Elvis also got a first round invitation to the National Parliamentary Tournament for the second year in a row. That tournament will be next month in Washington State. Loyola School of Communication has three winners in a national media festival. Two students and Professor J J John Goheen all won awards in the Festival of the Arts competition for the Broadcast Education Association. Senior communication and film major Kayla Branch won third place student documentary for her feature on a 26-year-old Loyola grad who became a nun. Here's an excerpt from Kayla's work. My name is Sister Alicia Torres and I am a novice with the Franciscans of the Eucharist, which is a religious community that lives at the mission of Our Lady of the Angels on the west side of Chicago. I really believe that I heard the Lord call me to this way of life when I was in, at Loyola when I was a junior. Um, it was at a point where I was kind of in a relationship with this guy and he was great. I mean, and we were awesome together. We did these sweet things and it was so cool. We could have like rocked the world, whatever. But there was never, there was never that peace deep down inside of me. Like I knew something was missing. My heart is really at peace living this way, you know, this life of prayer and service for the other person. And there's so much um, poverty out there. It's so funny because like, again, you think, these people must live these very strange lives and they're like in this building and they wear these weird clothes and what are they up to? But it's like, we do things that most anybody does. I mean, Father Bob loves Notre Dame football. Eric is a huge Bears fan. You know, Sister Stephanie was an NCAA runner. We all did normal things. It's just, you, you come from where you were and you come together and try to do something responding to God and, and what he needs done. Again, that was part of Caleb Branch's documentary, Young Nun a third place winner nationally. We'll bring you more from the other awards winners and on future newscasts. Some Loyola students are testing their limits as they prepare for Lent with some out of the ordinary sacrifices. Later on, a sophomore who's about to celebrate her fifth birthday. So stick around and we'll be right back. Okay, yo, yo, check out this chef, right? <laughs> right? That's so gay. That's really gay. <laughs> Dude, look at those pants. Please don't say that. What? Don't say that something is gay when you mean that something is dumb or stupid. It's insulting. It's like if I thought this pepper shaker was stupid and I said, man, and this pepper shaker is so 16-year-old boy with a cheesy mustache. Just saying. When you say that's so gay, do you realize what you say? Knock it off. It's a very important time in Christians' lives. Many Loyola students are observing this important holiday. Danielle Gallion went out to ask students what they're giving up this Lenten season. I'm Danielle Gallion here at Corboy Law School at Loyola University Chicago, and I'm asking students what they've given up for Lent this season. I've given, given up, up two things for Lent. What are those two things? Anything from a cow. So like no dairy, no beef, and like sweets. So no desserts. What kind of sweets? Anything. Anything that is sweet. But anything that would normally be considered dessert. I'm totally giving up. Which one is more? I actually forgot yesterday was Lent, um, so I didn't give anything up. <laughs> what about you? I didn't give up anything either. Oh, For Lent, I gave up Facebook because uh, I'm kind of addicted to it. So by giving it up, I just thought that, yeah, that would be something good to give up. I gave up cold cereal. You heard it here, folks. Students are giving up Facebook candy, pop, and some students aren't giving up anything. I hope they can make it for the next 40 days. I'm Danielle Gallion for Loyola News Chicago. Other popular Lenten sacrifices are alcohol, cursing, and even fast food. Lent lasts 40 days from Ash Wednesday until Easter Sunday. Chicago is rated one of the best college towns in the world. According to a data company in Britain, Chicago rank in at number 15 out of 20 and was second best out of the U.S., topped by Boston at number three. Some of the criteria for the survey includes the number of internationally ranked universities, quality of life, and affordability. Spring training is in full swing as Chicago's two baseball teams prepare for the upcoming season. 
we're asking Loyola students their predictions for the North and South side teams. Now that the Chicago Cubs have a new president and general manager, some fans are hopeful this season will include more wins. But Cubs fans admit, it might take a few years before that there's a big turnaround in the team's performance. White Sox fans say their team will be as solid as ever. As a Cubs fan, I'd like to think they do well this year, but um, I don't know. The new leadership, I like it. I think they can, but I'm, I'm always doubtful of the Cubs, of course. This season, I don't know. They're a bunch of young guys, but I like the direction they're heading, so I'm excited and optimistic. Um, we have like kind of an iffy lineup, but overall the coaches have a good plan and a good system, so I think we're just going to have a good year. The Cubs opening day at Wrigley Field is April 5th, where they'll play the Washington Nationals. The White Sox will officially open the regular season at U.S. Cellular Field on April 13th against the Detroit Tigers. Believe it or not, Leola has a student who will celebrate her fifth birthday this month. Angie Frazier has more on this interesting birthday story. Emily Braun is a sophomore environmental science major here at Loyola. She's a big fan of Green Day and plays the guitar. She also was born on the least common date on the calendar, February 29th. In fact, I've only had a couple people when I write my birthday down for something be like, you're a leap year baby. Most people, it just goes right past them. But of course, February 29th only comes around every four years, so most years Emily has to celebrate her birthday whenever it's convenient. <laughs> We've always just sort of celebrated whenever it was convenient and my entire life I've always managed to have like week, like week to two week long celebrations of my birthday because it'd be one weekend was family dinner and then like the next weekend would be a party with friends and you know uh, the 28th or the 1st depending on which one was more convenient would be just like dinner with my family and like you know if my sister would make me a cake or something. Emily might have the rarest birthday among her siblings, but you might say unique birthdays sort of run in the family. Leap Day falls on Wednesday, February 29th this year. And whether you are turning 20 like Emily, or you are over the hill, if you are a Leap Year baby, you are forever young. At Loyola's Water Tower Campus, Angie Frazier, Loyola News, Chicago. In the U.S., the driver's license for Leap Year babies lists their birthday as March 1st. In other countries, their birthday is listed as February 28th. See someone you have a crush on on the train? Take a picture and a new website posts the picture of your crush on its site. The Red Eye reports that ctacrush.com is encouraging Chicagoans to submit photos of their crushes on the CTA. The majority of the pictures are of men and the descriptions of the photos are short and simple. A photo of your crush might be wearing plaid, so the description will be plaid crush. The next time you are riding on the train, someone might be taking a picture of you as their crush. Jordan, have you ever taken a picture for the website? You know, I can't say that I have, and I don't know if that, that I would want to be on there either. <laughs> Me either. Well, that's our news for today. Thank you for watching. Or at ignition.lucc.com, .edu. Have a good day.